to you now recorded by Michael Jackson. Hello everyone, my name is Adidaya Adenuga, and with me I have Bola Joko Imano, popularly known as OG Bobo. You're welcome to this year's Global Heart in Medicine 2021 cohort. As we try to make the world a better place, giving our talent and our gift to humanity, I pray that it grows a seed that will outlive us by the grace of God. Enjoy this instrumental piece titled Heal the World originally recorded by Michael Jackson.
Welcome, welcome, everybody. Minister for Enjoyment is what everyone calls me because I love. Hello, everybody. How are we doing? Welcome to the Global Arts in Medicine Fellowship. I'm your hostess, Teresia, and I'll be joining in with Bethel Rodney and Oyinda. Welcome in. Please make sure when you come in to mute yourself and let us know where you're tuning in from so that I can just give you a little shout out. Please let me know if you can hear anything. Amazing. So I am Teresa Indongo. I am from the cohort 2020 to 2021. It was an amazing experience and I'm sure you guys will love the experience. So here's a documentary video for you and I'll be back. Afterwards, enjoy. I've been doing that. So. The power to mount exhibitions in unusual spaces has been gaining momentum in the country as artists are encouraged to take works of art to the people instead of always waiting for them to attend their exhibitions. This group has been doing that for a while now, but their mission is a bit humane. This is their location. The Lagos University Teaching Hospital and the Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Yaba, a really unlikely place for this art show. It's a rare collaboration between health practitioners and artists who design solutions that will transform the hospital experience for the caregivers and their patients. The health team is enlightened about the role of art as a treatment, as it has the ability to lift the spirits of those who are depressed due to the ailments they are faced with or the job they are saddled with. One of the coordinators, Kunle Adewale, explains how it works. Art in Medicine program has really helped to improve and encourage caregivers, patients to become more happy. Some of them, when they're about to go for procedures, we introduce art to them, they draw, they paint, we do bedside music, and all of these bring joy and happiness to the hospital environment. And therefore, some of them were very scared of procedures, they become more relaxed going through those procedures and then by the time they return, they want to just continue the artistic engagement we've started with them. So art so far, and art in medicine so far in the hospital environment in Nigeria has really improved the well-being of patients and transformed the healthcare experience, both for caregivers, even for healthcare workers, because people that come to the hospital environment before, and because of the way they work, they're tired, they're stressed out, but because of what we're doing, they are now more energized and become more passionate about what they do because art is really making them more happy and making them do their job in a very good way. are not the only ones part of the creative process. All hands are on deck from the patients, medical students, health professionals to other auxiliary staff. Everyone chips in and working as a team comes with its own rewards. We actually began here at a national sickle cell center 
about five years ago and um, it's something that's been a blessing to even us as staff but more importantly for our children, especially the children who have sickle cell. You see, when people have um, chronic illnesses, when they say they have an illness that's a lifetime or lifelong illness, they always want to find means of coping with the illness, with the disease. So we find that um, it's something that's not new in other parts of the world, but it's an innovation here. And I think we are in the forefront. So our children, whilst they're waiting in the waiting room to see the doctor, or to have a procedure or for, um, or for counseling. We bring all the artworks out with, with our art director and our facilitators, paint some brushes, pencils, name it, colors, and their faces just light up. And, they, and once, once they start, they don't even want to go in and see the doctor in the end. But more importantly, they now find that they have art in them. It's a very relevant, but eating, aspect of therapeutic health intervention aspects. Heart medicine has brought in a lot of relationship and has brought in a lot of transformation for the health centers. That is, we have a relationship between the body, the mind, and the spirit in terms of what does heart medicine has to offer. And in addition to that, we're saying that every individual needs art in medicine, especially with emphasis to those in healthcare settings. The these patients, clients in need of one medical need or the other. In that sense, it will bring out a lot of therapeutic, educative, and expressive form of feelings that will help to ensure that there is healing. The works of art are created to chase the blues away. From the beauty of nature, to famous comic heroes, to everyday activities that are bright and beautiful. During the Arts and Medicine Fellowship 2019, we created an installation, a flower installation, and we painted a superhero to show that the children, they can overcome the present situation and can strive and survive. So that was the theme of the painting and the flower installation, to surround them with positivity and energy and life. So that was what we, what we experienced. And I saw that the children, they did well while painting on the bedside. It was a very beautiful situation. Students that were, that were going through cancer, the people that were going through cancer, they had to, to engage in art, the wall painting. And even I, I recall one patient, a very significant patient, her name was Mary. She, she actually came to life when we were in the hospital. Anytime Mr. Kunle was around, Around. she came to life you could see her drawing near you know she wants to talk she does she doesn't say much but when Mr. Kunle comes around I'll start painting she's always excited and she, she she ends up being different and lively at the end of the day usually these children are in an environment that is bland an environment where they don't get to express themselves much but we came with the color we came with the vigor of art and you could see it lighting up that atmosphere and lighting up the patients themselves you could see them journey and being transported from where they were in that hospital environment that was gloomy to an environment of hope an environment of laughter an environment of joy and that's what art can do to anybody it's a very important uh, uh, program very important movement because it um it uh, shows the relevance of the creative arts you know, to society, how the creative arts has been used to shape society, to benefit and impact society. So I think it's very important. I commend the organizers, Tender Arts, uh, Mr. Kunle Adebowale for what he's doing, people like Ohinda Afake and all those medical students who have done so well to contribute their, their time. It goes beyond learning how to draw and paint, design thinking, creative writing, dance and music and health, are also part of the lineup of the Arts in Medicine Fellowship.
All right. Hi, everyone. Well, that's been amazing. Thank yes. you very much for that. You're welcome. Our special welcome to everyone. My name is Rodney from Uganda. And uh, I'll be I'll be co-hosting uh, together with uh, Theresia, Oyin, and uh, Bethel. So I'm glad to be here. Once again, I'm uh, a fellow from the previous cohort, the Pan-African cohort. And it's really amazing how the Arts in Medicine Fellowship pushes boundaries. It's great to see how art is being used to to, 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 to create hope and bring joy and balance to, to the people all over, all over Africa and all over the world. Yeah, and uh, especially in times like, like this where we have the pandemic, uh, it's, it's really amazing to see how art can be used as a vehicle to, to bring hope to the people. So during the registration process, we realized that we had a number of fellows out there that are really talented musically. And uh, so we, we, we decided to, to, to reach out to them and uh, make a call to, to, for them to submit some of the uh, videos and some of the items that they have. And we are glad to, to have one of the selected artists who will be showcasing from this cohort. His name is Karim Khalid, and uh, Oyin will be sharing uh, his expression. So please enjoy Karim's expression. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I am Oyin. Can you see me? Can you see me and hear me? I'm Oyin from um, Lagos, as um, Rodney shared, and I am um, <clears throat> also a, co a fellow from um, the 2021, 2020, um, you can't see me. You cannot see my beautiful face. You all are missing. Let me see if I can um, <laughs> rectify that. Oh, I just saw myself. <laughs> One, let's start again. <laughs> My name is Oye, and I'm a I'm a wellness coach and also a project um, manager for creative projects. I'm a cohort or I'm a fellow from the 2020 um, cohort. So my during my session, we started physically and then the pandemic happened and then we switched over to the virtual experience, which has been very um, instrumental in how art and medicine has um, pivoted into pan africa and now the global edition so we're really excited um, as rodney said we have a lot of creative um, fellows who have joined us this, this year but before we go into showing um the music by by karim we're going to have a welcome remark by dr annette dr annette akishete Teresa, are you going to introduce Dr. Annette to us, please? I see she's in the house. Of course, it would be an honor. So Dr. Annette Akinsete is a woman of many parts. Uh, married with three children, she is inter alia a consultant public health physician, a teacher, and a broadcaster. She was director public health department of the Federal Ministry of Health for many years and has represented the federal government of Nigeria at several forums all over the world. As a public health physician, Akinshete has worked in every level of government in Nigeria from local, state or federal levels at global level, she has contributed to World Health Organization publications on non-communicable diseases, served as WHO's fellow in Geneva and as UN CARES facilitator at the United Nations HQ in New York. 
She remains a key resource person of NCDs for the West African Health, o Health Organization. Akinsete represents Women's Board at the United Nations and continues to help in the formation of young girls as a brownie, as a brownie owl. That, I don't know, I don't know. That, I am honored to be in your presence, Dr. Annette. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am inspired, I am inspired. Thank you so much. Oin, can you unmute her? Let me do that. Um, okay, she's unmuted. Okay. There you go. Thank you, Teresa, for that introduction. Um, it is really my honor to be here this afternoon. I, I um, let me first of all say, looking at on the list, you have 130 persons joining from across the globe. It's, it is, it deserves a round of applause. Fantastic. This is really great. So I, I'm privileged. I'm honored to be part of this um, endeavor. And um, I, I, is this my, my work today is really very short, just to formally welcome you, f welcome um, fellows, welcome guests from everywhere in the world to this um, um, forum. And to say that it, it started some years ago with young Kunle coming into my office. And really I'm emotional right now, you know, being part of this and seeing how it has grown. It was, it was a conversation between young Kule and I, and he, then he, he came in as a Mandela fellow. Um, and he had so many ideas. That's the thing about Kunle, the wonderful thing about Kunle. He brims with ideas and, you know, but I felt, okay, yeah, I am, I'm, I'm in awe of this young man. Let's go, let's run with what you're proposing and suggesting. So I, as I'm the national director and CEO of Sickle Cell Foundation Nigeria. So I brought him on board and say, okay, said, okay, let's start working with our children. As you may know, um, sickle cell is a condition that deals with a lot of pain, 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 pain. Pain is a hallmark of the disease. And um, as much as possible, we're even trying now in treatment protocols to see how we can reduce the amount of medication and, and bring on board non-pharmacological means of dealing with pain. And that was one of the things I really saw happen. And uh, as I'm speaking to you now, we're documenting so that we can have evidence of how much this has really helped our patients. So with Kunle and his team, we started an arts and medicine program or project in the Sickle Cell Foundation Nigeria with our children, especially. So um, a, a couple of weeks in the month, you know, every Wednesday, more or less, come, Kune would come in as a facilitator with his wonderful team, guiding our children with, with what? Canvas, art and everything. This, the great thing about what I first noticed was that it helped in our genetic counseling. It helped in our genetic counseling. When you're talking with children, sometimes, or many times, children do not find the words to express themselves so and and but when you give them art material they express themselves on canvas and this has helped our genetic counselors to to uh, interpret what's going on in the minds of our children and in many ways has helped them and helped their families to um, take care of the condition called sickle cell disorder as far as the pain is concerned that pain we talk about talk to young people especially and many of them normally would go over the counter and procure Sometimes, you know, very uh, strong analgesics, which we are trying to discourage. But you see, they said to us, they admitted to us that once they start working on their art, they forget the pain. They forget the pain. So this is one way to cope with pain. And I think in one of the uh, documentaries we watched, the documentary we watched earlier, one of the ways that chronic, people with chronic diseases tend to want to deal with their condition is through art. That has been found to work. There's empiric empirical evidence that it works for any chronic condition, and that is sickle cell, that is cancer, and in, in um, and also in art therapy for psychosocial disorders. There's so much that art can bring. But let, let's move away from patients now and look at the space where we work, the space that we call medical spaces, what you normally would call hospitals and clinics. So again, 
with arts and medicine, we're moving away from the whiteness and clinical in spaces that you call hospitals. We're moving towards what you might see in the um, hospitality industry. So you see colorful um, walls, murals, art um, displays everywhere. And what does that do to you? Do for not just the patients, but for health caregivers as you come into work, there's an ambience that's different, that's welcoming. And as, as much as it helps the patient, it also helps the healthcare workers. For us, my staff and I, we normally go down to join patients in you know, art, in painting, in drawing, and so on. But we've also extended to music. So, so some, you won't be surprised when you come into Sickle Cell Foundation Nigeria, the National Sickle Cell Center, to hear strains of music, strains of instruments in the, in the lobby or sometimes in the waiting room. And then we also brought in storytelling. Storytelling has also helped us um, with the patients that have sometimes even uh, suicidal tendencies. There are psychosocial problems that you cannot, your patients will not tell you. They won't volunteer information, but it may tell you as a third party st story. So in storytelling, uh, genetic counselors are able to glean or see red flags where they might exist. These are different ways we have brought in art in medicine to bear. So I'm, I'm just giving you this background to say we started really small, but see where we are. And I tell you, I think we're only just scratching the surface. We've only just begun to scratch the surface. They, they, what, the, what I see in the future, I cannot even see the future. The horizon is distant, but it is going to be really big. See, here we are around this table, as I say, and the kudos I would say to if nothing else, what um, um, Corona, uh, the COVID-19 has brought for us is this opportunity to be able to you know, cross barriers in time and space and come together around the cause, around the table. So that's how we are able to do this you know, virtually. So everyone is here from everywhere in the world and it is wonderful. So it is, it is indeed my pleasure to welcome everyone, to welcome particularly those um, fellows who are going to be in this new cohort, to tell them that, tell you all that you are entering something big. You are part of a mighty big picture and the, the future really, the, the, the world is your oyster. And what you can do with art is un un thing, uncountable, is limitless, is, is really limitless, is, is, it's left to you. We're moving, moving art away from um, spaces that are just physical and moving it into the community, moving it into the virtual space. So the sky is your, not even your limits, the sky is probably going to be your beginning. I welcome you all really formally to this um, um, event and I wish you all the best as you start. And I know that you're going to make a difference in the world beyond art in medicine. It's, it's, even though it's called art in medicine, they're going to go beyond art and medicine to other spaces. Godspeed all of you. Thank you so much. That was powerful, doctor. Thank you so much. And I hope that the fellows are inspired. We have so much coming through. Rodney, over to you, please.
Wow, thank you so much, Teresia and Owen and everybody else here. Can everybody hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. My name is Betel. I'm one of the other co-hosts um, from Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, and I was part of the 2020 slash 2021 Winter Cohort Fellowship. Mm, professionally, I'm a medical doctor and I'm currently the country liaison director for Ethiopia. And I'm so honored to be amongst you all. And in case you didn't know, that was the anthem for the arts and medicine. And now I'll be sharing some testimony both from myself and from other fellows of the past cohort. I hope you enjoy it. Now I'll be sharing my screen. If you can see it, you can tell me. Can you view my screen, everybody? It's still loading. Yes, it's on. Okay. Thank you. These are some short testimonials. First, I'll be starting from myself. Uh, as you can see, I enjoyed the program very well because not only it was also informative, but also heartfelt and also that and I also saw some amazing dedication from my mentors. So be sure to use your mentors. And my group members taught me a lot. They taught me that I can incorporate arts and medicine together because my life was all medical driven and I couldn't see anything beyond medicine. And the arts and medicine program showed me how to be humble, to be heartfelt, and it was so inspiring. And I personally believe in taking a holistic approach to life. So being a part of this program has allowed me to do just that and I have nothing but gratitude for Mr. Connelly and everyone in this program and thank you so much. And now to the other testimonial, this is one of our fellow from United Kingdom. Uh, she is a self-taught artist. Her name is Aditayo Adeyoni. I hope I didn't butcher her name. Uh, this is what she said. She said that the experience she got from the arts and medicine was one of the biggest eye openers in the world, which had, which uh, she had some, but not enough knowledge about. And it's, she was like Alice in Wonderland when she goes down the rabbit hole and opening one's creative mind to different ways so that she, she can touch the society and community and beautify environments that make her feel downcast, despondent into the bright side of life, transforming lives, bringing smiles hope and faith in so much delight and laughter and making every situation beautiful in her eyes. There was, a, there was never a dull moment for her and we're so happy that she joined. Uh, our next testimony was from a fellow in Nigeria. Uh, he was an art lecturer, Ohambele James Chimizi. I hope I again didn't butcher his name. Uh, he said that the Arts and Medicine Fellowship was a unique opportunity for him to see in a broader vision the potential of arts and medical practice, and it expanded his understanding of the possibilities inherent in the synergy between art and medicine in, from a global perspective. Uh, the other testimony is from one of our co-hosts today, Rodney. <laughs> Hope you're watching. This is your testimonial. He's from Uganda. And he said that it was an amazing experience and meeting virtually with different young and older people from across Africa. So when you meet both young and older people, you have this transgenerational uh, experience, experiences and everything. There's so much to learn from someone younger than you or older than you. I mean, there's this habit of the younger generation not being, especially millennials and Gen Z, not being able to communicate with older people, but this, program will allow you to do just that. And he also said that there, it was his first virtual fellowship and, that he was a part of. And he learned a lot from the different sessions and workshops that he went through. And it actually reaffirmed the work that he did with young people and he still does that. Uh, he helps treat, connect children uh, and the youth at risk here in his hometown in Uganda. And it gave him some more validation because he understood that it was relevant and it didn't go unnoticed. And thank you, Rodney. The other testimonial is 
from a retired surgeon or traumatologist in Hungary. And we were so honored to have him during the program with the last cohort. And this is what he had to say. He said that it was very impressive and he was able to convince his patients to use different art related aspects to ease the tension and worries. So this is only the short version. We've had so many testimonies uh, from other fellows, but we just wanted to show you what it was like to be a part of this fellowship. So thank you. This is part of the testimonial and I'll be moving on to Theresia and we have another another uh, testimony to show you, but due to time con constraints, we'll be moving on to the video from video recording that was shown in Al Jazeera. So give me a second. Thank you very much, uh, Bethel, for that, uh, for the presentation. And, uh, once again, my name is Rodney Chigundu. Um, I'm a visual artist by profession. I come from Uganda. I'm also a co-host today uh, alongside Bethel and Ian and Theresia. I'm glad to be here and I'm glad to welcome all of you here. I am also from the previous uh, cohort, the Pan-African Fellowship. And uh, my job today is uh, I'll be introducing the next uh, presenter, uh, who is Karim, the one I talked about earlier, uh, Karim. 
who is from Egypt. I'll read his bio shortly. Uh, Karim Khalid, a service engineer from Egypt for pharmaceutical machines. He plays piano since 2015. Uh, he practices meditation with music, and this helped him a lot to achieve many goals, and it has helped him a lot to live balance. And for this reason, he has a passion to practice music therapy on people to have benefits for people, as, a, as he has had a lot of benefits from it. He's an art therapy coach, certified from Cambridge International University, and is also an EFT and matrix re-imprinting certified coach from the same university. So this is one of the fellows from this cohort. Uh, as we say that year, uh, we have a number of talented fellows from, from this cohort, and we are yet to see more and more in the community and, and team project, more and more talents and more and more create, creativity. Yeah, so let's hear from uh Karim's expression. Thank you. to see you know, all these amazing and uh, exciting performances in your community from the different fellows in the community and, and uh, team projects. And uh, as Teresa shared earlier, uh, this is our first uh, uh, Global Arts and Medicine Fellowship. I happen to be part of uh, the previous cohort, like I've, I've been saying. And uh, it was represented by a number of African countries. But then uh, what's exciting is this time we have in the global edition, a number of applications, received a number of applications from all over different countries around the world. And the selection process was quite tight. But let's see what some of the countries uh, from which the fellows are coming from are, are represented. Uh, this year, but also uh, uh, I'll be sharing my screen shortly to show you some of the uh, cultures, the dressing, and the different lifestyles from the different uh, people or fellows from the different countries that got selected this year. Thank you. Mm. Okay. 
guys see my screen. Okay. All right. We can't see your screen. Yeah. Yeah, so here is a glimpse into, into the, the Global Arts in Medicine Fellows World. And uh, Rodney, are you there? Okay, since we may have lost Rodney. Oh, he's there. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, so this is a glimpse into some of the of the fellows. And like I said, uh, we, we, they get to share the people, the flag, the music, like exciting stuff from their country, the food, the arts, the architecture. So we we'll have a number of fellows that are going to submit some of the uh, collages that you see. And uh, start from uh, Nigeria, uh, the mother of, of uh, the Arts and Medicine Fellowship. I would, I would say the host of the Arts in Medicine Fellowship and the Global Arts in Medicine Fellowship. And uh, 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 these were represented by Ola Jube Bartholomew, who got to share some of the things that they have, the food, uh, the music, the attire, the art, the flag, like you can see. Yeah. I don't know if he's online. If he's online, he could share something. But if he's not, uh, probably could go ahead because of time. Uh, we have uh, Gabriela from Brazil. She got to share some of the things that exciting things that they have in Brazil. You can see the landscape. Hello. Yeah, so uh, I, I was saying Gabriela shared some of the landscapes, the arts, the nature, but also the the dressing, as you can see, the Brazil flag, the art is also represented. We could see some of the martial arts here from Brazil. And uh, you could share some of these things into the chat box so that people get to know more about your culture, your lifestyle, the kind of dressing. Hi. Uh, yeah, Gabriela. Oh. Hi, sorry, I, I think I'm just unmuted now. Yeah, yeah, okay. sure. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, first of all, I'm just, I just want to say that I'm super happy to be here. It's really an honor to be part of this journey and beautiful initiative. Um, so my name is Gabriela or Gabby. Um, I'm from Brazil, but I'm currently living and working in Germany um, as an experienced designer. Um, so when I was asked to do this little slide about Brazil, um, I thought about when you hear first about my country, um, your first thoughts might go straight to our football team, to the carnival in Rio, maybe our messy politics. Um, so I thought I might take this opportunity to move away a little bit from all of that. Um, and since we're talking about art, to rather create something to celebrate our beautiful, diverse culture, our art, our music, our nature. Uh, because this really is what Brazil is about for me. Um, we're a melting pot of different cultural influences, uh, different landscapes, different colors, different voices and stories. Um, I haven't lived in my country for about 20 years now. Um, and this diversity really in everything um, is one of the things that I, I miss the most and one of the things that I'm most proud of uh, my country. So it's hard to boil it down to one minute and one slide, but I hope this little teaser um, entices your curiosity to maybe seek to see Brazil under any light. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriela. Uh, next, we shall have, I, I think I saw Bartholomew coming in. And... Uh, Someone can help me uh, uh, admit him. Sorry. Uh. 
Awesome. Thank you for that, Gabriella. I hope I got your name right. So Sorry. next up, we have Ethiopia. Ethiopia. Represented by your... Your Danus Dereje. Is she there? Okay, uh, then she's not here. We'll move on quickly to Jordan. Jordan? Mm -hmm. Represented by Mesa Abdul Gohad. <laughs> Can you pronounce her name? Mesa Abdul, Ab Abdul Gohad. Hello. Hello. Hi, my name uh, is Mesa Abdul Gohad. Abu uh, yeah. Nice to meet you, Mesa. Nice meeting you. Uh, I'm proudly representing Jordan in this collage. Uh, I have shared with you some of uh, what Jordan is famous for. Uh, and uh, uh, Jordan has uh, more than 10 million people living there, with about 2 million living in the capital city, Amman. Uh, one of the most traditional dishes served in Jordan is called mensa, uh, made with rice, lamb, and a special type of yogurt. Uh, Jordan is also famous for having one of the seven wonders of the world, Petra, also known as the Rose City. Um, as some of you know, the Dead Sea in Jordan is the lowest point on earth, has the saltiest water, and is famous for its... Uh, healing benefits uh, since uh, the biblical times. And uh, because it's very salty, they, there is no fishes living inside it. Jordan is also famous for its um, polyfloric dances, like uh, such as the Dabke. Uh, and the uh, Oud and Bazooka are only a few of the instruments played in traditional uh, Jordanian songs. Uh, a fun fact, the part of the movie Aladdin was filmed in the famous desert of uh, Wadi Ram. And um, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm so happy and excited to be part of the program. And I hope uh, to share more uh, artifacts uh, as the course uh, continues. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you, Maisa. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank for, you. For that. Yeah, thank you. That was a tour around Jordan. So we move on to Uganda. Emma, are you there? Emma? And since we don't have Emma, let's go on to Kenya. Kenya? Do we have Ines? Kenya, Ines? Ines, are you there? Kenya looks so colorful. I really love yeah. to visit. We should plan an arts and medicine holiday where we all just go visit. <laughs> <laughs> different countries. Ines, are you there? Next off, we have America, USA. No, it's Who's South Africa, actually. Sorry? South Africa. South Africa. Is this South Africa? Yes. <laughs> this is United States. I think we skipped South Africa. <laughs> yeah, South Africa is here. Uh, by Mokone Ratsfe. I hope I pronounced that right. South Africa? Anyone? Okay. Yeah. Uh, we have USA, United States of America. By April. April, are you By here? April. I think April? most of them are muted. Oh. South Africa is here. She just says to unmute. Mm -hmm. um, April is here. Is April here? You can lift your hand, raise your hand if you're here so that we can unmute you. Yeah, sure. Would love to hear more about these beautiful places. Okay, 
Okay, somebody's hand is raised and I need oh. to find you. Okay. Who is that? Amy. Amy from, yes. from, uh, from Kenya? Kenya. Yes. Yeah, Amy, go ahead. Uh, please put up my screen for Kenya. Yes, in a moment. It's here. No. No. Go back up. No, yeah. she's right. We're on Kenya now. Oh, hi. Hi, my name is Agnes. Wakarema Buzalmia, um, otherwise known as Neve. Uh, my country, Kenya, is in East Africa, that's where you know us from. Uh, we are bordered by Uganda, by Ethiopia, by Tanzania, uh, by Somalia, by Sudan, uh, Southern Sudan, that is. Uh, yes. Uh, my country also also has several cultures. You asked us to tell you about the famous places in our country. Uh, my country has one of the places being Fort Jesus. Fort Jesus was a, a, a fort, let me call it a fort, a very big fort that was built by the Portuguese early in the 1600s and it was used for trading. And then later on, it was used by the British and also by the other slave, slave people who wanted slaves as a place where they, it was an intermediate where they could, they could put slaves and then uh, transport them to the other parts of the world. Uh, you can also get to visit the Lamu, the Lamu old town, being an old town where they don't have any vehicles going through those places. Uh, and then they, that Lamu town is also famous for its, for its uh, culture, where it is and it has different cultures put together. Uh, those being included being the Arab culture, the Indian culture, and also the Swahili culture. All of them coming together. Seems like we've lost Inez. Inez, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I can hear you. So we can. Okay. Uh, I was talking about the famous cultural places they are, the places that we are famous for. Uh, that will be inclu include Fort Jesus. I'm sure you have heard of Fort Jesus being one of the famous places in Kenya. Uh, this Fort Jesus is, was built by the Portuguese early in the 1600s as one of the places where they used to trade. It was a trade center. And then later on, it was used by the British to transport slaves uh, from, uh, from Kenya all the way to the other parts of the world that they were needed. Now, the other culture you also may know about it, the Maasai culture. I will say the people of Kenya have different cultures. We are a country that is made up of more than 47 tribes. Uh, one of the most famous being known is the Maasai culture where we have this sugar or the colorful, colorful materials that we have that are, that are known for in the world. Uh, the other part that we are known for, which you might want, when you visit us, you might want you to see, it's a jamachoma, that is barbecued meat, that is then accompanied by that is then accompanied by ugali, which is um, that being a meal that is of uh, maize flour and also kachubari. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Inez, are you still there? Can you? Yes, I'm still here. Yeah, you can continue. There's a lot of background noise. That's why. Continue, we can hear you. Okay. Well, when you're in Kenya, you should try our, our meat. That is uh, roasted meat or barbecued meat. Uh, that is then accompanied by ugali. That is maize flour. 
that is maize that has been grounded to make flour, which is very sweet, although it has its own natural sweetness, although you're allowed to add other ingredients to it if you should feel so. And also kachubali, that is a mixture of uh, tomatoes and uh, onions with some with some pili pili, that is chili, but added to it. And then some salt, if you want to add salt to that meat. And that is usually very, very sweet. And uh, most of these animals that are usually roasted or barbecued, they include the cows, the goats, and uh, the sheep. Also, you are also known our artists that they may include Saudi soul, they may include Nyashinsky, these artists are known for the unique music that has the African beat, but also part of it has some pop music in it. Also, there's another other artist that they may be the heart band. These artists, they mostly put the African beats into their songs and they do a lot of spoken word with Kiswahili and also with English as part of it or Sheng. And then we also have our flag. Our flag is one that as Kenyans, we love it. We love our flag because it normally represents the, the struggle that we went through to gain our independence when we gained it. And uh, the different colors that you can see on our flag, they represent different things for our country. Black being representing the skin color of our people. Because if you look around and if you walk around uh, Kenya, most of us are dark skinned. Now that represents the whole of Kenya because we are very, very much like dark skinned. Now with the white, the white strip that you can see, that normally represents peace. This color represents that we must always maintain the peace in our country. And uh, the red, it represents the blood that was shed by the people who we are fighting for the independence of our country, who we still celebrate up to today with, uh, uh, with 1st June being Madaraka Day, that's when we gained independence. And then uh, 12th uh, December, that's when we became a national republic. That's when you are given our full way to become a full-pledged country. Now the green, the green represents the, our land, the land of Kenya, where we, as we say, we are supposed to tell the land for us to get food. And uh, most of the time, all over Kenya, people do tell their land and uh, you will see the green landscapes that you, you can see all over the country. Now for the shield, as you can see that shield over there, it represents the fact that as Kenyans, we should always be ready to defend our country against all and also we should maintain our country being one of the best countries. Uh, another fact is uh, our, my city Nairobi has a national park within it. You should always make sure you get to Nairobi, make sure you visit this national park, which is the only national park that is within our city. I hope you have enjoyed my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Really, really uh, great to around Kenya virtually. Yeah, uh, let me request the next presenters. I, I can see a, a bunch of hands. Uh, let's make sure we use at least one minute to, to, to share our presentation in the interest of time. Uh, let me, uh, I see Mokone, is it South Africa? Yes, thank you so much, Rodney. I think Rodney was who was speaking just now. Um, yes, so most people know South Africa has a, sorry, hi everybody. I just sort of like started driving through because of time. Um, as most people know, South Africa is known as the rainbow nation. And that's because we have a tremendous amount of different cultures and nationalities in South Africa. We have 12 official languages. And of those 12 official languages, that doesn't even include the Khoisan people, the Griqua, um, and the some of the like First Nations languages, because they don't have like a 
like a specific language without the dialects because their dialects are so different from each other. Um, so we have a lot of different cultures and communities in South Africa, as you can see. Um, we also happen to have the second, like the, the largest population of Indian people outside of India. So that is an interesting fact that a lot of people don't know. And predominantly these Indian people actually live in the KZN, which is a province in South Africa. Um, our art has been um, tremendously in like influenced by rock art paintings that we find in different parts of South Africa. Um, something that other people don't know is South Africa has 10 UNESCO heritage sites um, that are protected. So we have a lot of rock art and we also have the cradle of humanity where we found proof that um, human beings originated from Africa, um, which is great. Um, we also have a lot of different fossil sites and the, the giraffe that has the shortest neck actually known, there's a fossil that has like a, a it's a giraffe, but it has the same, like a neck that is the same length. It has a short neck um, and it was found in South Africa way back in the day. So we do have um, a lot of fossils on dinosaurs and the ancestors of some of the animals that we find in Africa. Um, another thing is our music can be like very, very diverse, but something that is interesting to note is in the 1950s South Africa, actually Bloemfontein where I live, we were the first place outside of the United States to actually have a jazz club. And this jazz club is actually in um, Haydadal, which is basically a First Nations or a colored community in South Africa. Um, and the majority of our food, if there's one thing you should know about South African people is we love fire. So, um, <laughs> so a lot of the food that we have is by a fire. So we love our brais. Um, anybody who's ever visited South Africa will know about brais. But you'll see in the images, there's like a small pot and it's like a black pot. Um, that, pot that pot is called, <laughs> um, it's basically like a three-legged pot. And basically it is specifically made for you to cook on the fire. Anytime there's a huge gathering, it doesn't matter how big you're cooking for people, the catering is probably gonna happen by a fire. Um, we have some amazing food, like we fry most of our meat or fry most of our meat. Um, we uh, buy the fire, <laughs> cook our meat by the fire. But one of my favorite, favorite, favorite meals like growing up and coming into like adulthood is something we call dihorolo. And dihorolo is basically um, tripe, um, like the insides of like the animal's stomach. So the lungs, um, the small intestines and the large intestines chopped up. And that's the picture in the corner, right corner, <clears throat> right there. And you can flavor it in so many different ways to make it even more amazing. But yeah, like there's so much to say about South Africa. I don't wanna take any more time, but that's something to note. One last thing, our flag, as you guys will note, um, one of the things that makes our flag unique is first and foremost, it does not have, for example, like a emblem inside or like an animal or a symbol in the, in the flag. And that is actually because the South Africa's official flag right now was technically a flag that was supposed to be a trial basis, but it was so popular after post-apartheid that um, none of the other flags were good enough for the South African population. And basically the way it flows into the Y is basically um, us um, raising note that from here on in, the country will flow in one direction. We will unify, yes, we're different, but we will unify and flow in the same direction, which is another beautiful thing. But yes, thank you, that's it. That was awesome. Very um, insightful pull of um, South Africa. Thank you very much um, for that. Um, we're very much behind time, sorry everyone. Um, we want to respect everyone's time. Um, so Bethel is going to introduce um, our, next, our next speaker as we move swiftly along. Bethel, are you there? 
Sorry, oh, yes, ask, I am. Oh, you consular, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Um, we don't want to deprive others the opportunity of introducing their country. I want to just plead with whoever is going to be presenting us, please stick to the one minute. It's because other people have started spending almost 10 minutes on one minute presentation, it's going to affect others. So we don't want to deprive other people of the opportunity that is due to them. Please. Let's go back to others, please. Okay, okay. So, um, April, is April here? I know you had your hands, your hand raised earlier. I see Emma. Um, hi, yes, I'm here. Thank you all for having me. Um, America is a very grand and diverse place. So it's pretty difficult for me to give an expansive because it's made up of um, so many different cultures. Um, I am from the deep south which is um, one of the 11, 11 areas that most people identify. Um, of course, you have the far west, the Midlands, the greater Appalachian, the Netherlands, the First Nation and the left coast, um, the Yankee and the El Norte. Um, and so many people may know um, the U.S. for their food, their culture, their music, the sports, um, the architecture. And so I just provided some images to kind of gather um, that as best as um, I could. Um, individuals may hear about the Grand Canyon, um, Mount Rushmore, um, like I said, tech innovations, you know, different types of, of sports. But I will say that my cultural lens is a bit biased being from the deep south um, of Mississippi and seeing the world through that lens. But overall, um, America is a big um, world of many generations and many um, diverse and ethnic people um, who have come together to you know, share their talents and cultures and recipes and lessons. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, let's have Emma, I saw Emma. Am I here? Uh, yes, actually, you, you can. Can you hear me? Can everyone hear me? What country is Emma? Uganda. Uh, Uganda. Uh, just My brother from Uganda. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I'm really delighted to be part of this gathering and also uh, to be joining this great family. My name is Sekito Kale Emmanuel. I'm a visual artist and uh, representing Uganda. Uh, so uh, with the slide, uh, we're trying to represent the two things about Uganda that definitely each one of you should look out, especially when you visit Uganda. So on the side of, of the slide, you can see uh, uh, chicken, chicken. We, there's some kind of food that we eat in Uganda. It's called wombo. It's locally prepared chicken. They put it within banana fibers. So I don't know if any one of you has heard of banana fibers, but what happens is that they slaughter chicken and, and then prepare it within uh, within banana fibers. It's one of the most, most, most delicious uh, meals for if you, you visit Uganda. And also uh, the part of the architecture, I've tried to represent uh, one of the iconic buildings in Uganda. It's called the Baha'i Temple. It's such a beautiful uh, structure that whenever you visit Uganda, it, it would captivate your your eyes, especially when you come into cross contact with it. It lights in the night and also during the day it is seen and it is placed in a space where uh, every person can see it from diff the different parts of, of, of Kampala. And also representing the, uh, uh, the equator, like we well know that Uganda is, is in the, uh, East Africa and is one of the countries through which the equator passes. So most of the people, especially uh, those that come to tour Uganda, they have uh, that uh, up close interaction with the equator. So they like and, and always uh, take the initiative to go and visit the equator and take pictures for, for that. It can remind them of their time in Uganda. So it's such a, a tremendous and an excellent uh, space that you should visit, especially when you come to Uganda. And uh, also representing, uh, we have the uh, national emblem, uh, which is what represented as the, uh, the crested crane, such a beautiful bird that uh, every person in our country, whenever they see them, uh, they see these birds with pride. They see them and they respect them because they represent the nation, uh, Uganda, where we come from. And also representing uh, the main dancing. As a country, we are so much into culture and dances. And this is not only uh, to the ladies, but also uh, the men. The men involve themselves into the Uganda dance, like the picture they showed. A men are dancing. When, when they're dancing, they don't even believe that they're men. Uh, they shake their uh, waistlines as though they're women. So it is really 
uh, interesting uh, that people in Uganda uh, celebrate their cultures, but also uh, these cultures bring us together. We are so diverse, like other countries, but when it comes to our country, different cultures, uh, we relate to them as Ugandans. So also on the other side, you see- Thank you. Uh, our flag. Thank you, Emmanuel. We have to interrupt <laughs> you there. It's okay. Thank, Thank you. you so much for sharing about Uganda. <laughs> Thank you, Emma. Okay, yeah. we're going to go on to um, Egypt. Egypt actually has, uh, you, could play, you could play the, it has a bit. Uh, Sorry, do, is Dr. Sahar Yeah, here? I'm here. Can you take us one minute, please? Through okay, uh, when I talk about uh, I'm Dr. Sahar, I'm a child psychiatrist. I work in the area of special need. When I was thinking about Egypt uh, in one minute, seven thousand years of civilization, so I thought to put pictures of the pyramids, the first um, uh, civilization, uh, the Sphinx. Then I was thinking about the, what about now? We have the the longest tower in Africa. Uh, our culture is diverse, full of different things, starting from pharaohs, where we can see flutes and harps on the temples. Till now, we have uh, very famous uh, singers. Our cinema is very famous. We are um, the Hollywood of the Middle East. Um, when I think about Egypt, I'm thinking about the art. Uh, yes, we have very uh, special um, drawing on temples, but we have also famous artists like Mahmoud Mukhtar, Farouk Hosni, um, in, in the recent years. We are talented in sport. I think many uh, people know Muhammad Salah, who is very famous. We have people who are win Nobel Prize in, uh, in literature, like Nagib Mahfouz. When I'm thinking about Egypt, I'm thinking about the hospitality, the smile on the faces. We will welcome all of you to visit Egypt to try our food like koshari, mulukiya. It's a country, um, welcome everyone from every place in the world. And just, I can say that we are seven uh, years of civilization to, so you can come and see everything in Egypt. Thank you so much for that. And yes, we would like to visit Egypt. <laughs> Thank you. So up next we have, I think it's Tanzania. Hello, everyone. Do Hello. you hear me? Yes, I hear I'm Grace from Tanzania. Let me try to speak to one minute. As you can see, Tanzania is having the famous Mount Kilimanjaro, which is the highest mountain in Africa. And it's a tourist attraction for hiking. And the second picture is the cultural center in the famous uh, tourism city of Arusha. In Tanzania, we don't have a specific dance for the national. This we have uh, almost more than 120 tribes. So this one is the one of the dance. About the food step is common to all communities. The white stuff is a common food, which is made by maize flour, which is known as ugali is eaten with a meat stew and all kinds of meat, green veggies and the legumes or salad. And the building which is seen there, it is the tallest building in the Eritrean city, which belongs to Bank of Tanzania. Thank you. You are all welcome to Tanzania. Thank you. Please. Thank you. Anyone from Qatar? I think we don't have anyone from Qatar. Botswana? Botswana? Nyasha, you can go ahead. Are you muted? And, Thank you. 
Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Hi, no, I just uh, because you went to yes, Ireland, sir? so I saw that you had moved to Ireland. Okay, so yeah, we'll go straight to Ireland. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Carmen and I'm representing Ireland, but I'm actually originally from Spain, but uh, I'm really, really happy to be here and meeting so, so many wonderful people and artists and uh, workers in the health sector. So just uh, Ireland is, is a land of music, literature from uh, an Asian heritage. Some of the most important uh, writers historically um, like we have writers like Oscar Wilde, Samuel Becker, Bernard Shaw, Jane Joyce, and actually Ireland is one of the few countries that have four Nobel Prize uh, writers to then uh, poet, poets. Uh, it has a wonderful landscape, lovely scene, and you can appreciate that when you look at the castle, uh, known for lots of uh, scenery, and the green, but it's also a country where you can have lots of fun. And it's a very well known the St. Patrick um, uh, Festival, which happened every time in March. But unfortunately, due to COVID, it hasn't happened in the last couple of years. But I definitely recommend it. It began to be a uh, a uh, commemoration of St. Patrick and the arrival of Christianity to Ireland, but today it's just celebrate the heritage and culture of the Irish in general. And just also, it's very, Ireland is a place where a lot of famous band has come out, like uh, I'm sure most of you will know you too, uh, but also uh, Ireland has a great culture in traditional Irish music and Irish dance. So. Yeah, if you ever get a chance to visit Ireland, I completely recommend it. A wonderful place to live and to very proud to represent Ireland at this moment. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carmen. Thank you very much for that. Okay, we move very swiftly along to Venezuela. Do you have Umar with us? We have someone from yeah. Venezuela with us. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? You have one minute to take us through Venezuela. Yeah, but uh, can you hear me? Can you see me at all? We can hear you. Okay, great. Okay, so um, we call Venezuela the um, Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. I'm not going to go um, very deep into everything because it's a lot to go from um, uh, from liberator and. Um, uh, to all the details of uh, geography and history. But I'm just going to sweep into the culture of the country just to um, say that we're composed by basically indigenous Venezuelans, the Africans, and the influence of the Africans and the Spanish and the blend that we are now um, regarding uh, now to the um, deep influences of the indigenous and the Africans. Uh, uh, limiting uh, and actually expanding those influences into two lanes and places. I want, I, I'm not going to go into deep into all the culture because it's a lot to go through, but I'm going to um, choose a bit of our music and dance, which is more the things um, I dedicate to now. And, and I want to say that um, we have our national musical instrument called the Cuatro. It's a small um, which is a small guitar, sort of small, very typical um, guitar. Um, we have also um, contemporary styles or uh, traditional styles of um, musical groups like but basically uh, what is more original would be Almayanera, traditional musical styles in, uh, from the Llanos region, like Almayanera. Uh, Florentino y el Diablo, Concierto en la Llanura, Caballo Viejo by Simón. And we also have the Zulian Gaita, which is um, more of a popular genre gen um, used and performed in Christmas time. Um, we also can speak about the Joropo, which is the dance, typical dance in Venezuela. And uh, 
uh, musical styles, typical musical styles and dances are like calypso, bambuco, fulia, cantos uh, de pilado de maíz, and other um, styles. Um, Thank you. About the 19th century, going to Teresa Carreño, which was a very virtuoso um, pianist, uh, but uh, we could also go to the young, uh, the Simon Bolivar Youth Orchestra, led by Gustavo Duhamel which would, uh, and Jose Antonio Abreu, which would be uh, more of what we have contemporary um, as a sign of uh, world, uh, world impact culture of our country. Thank you so much for that minute. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, go to the United Kingdom. And, I think and our last one. presentation for today, for this session. Anna, is Anna Hi, with us? Hi there, can you hear me? Yes, we can. It's Anna? Hi there, I'll just be Where's really quick. Hi, I'm Hannah, I'm from Liverpool in the UK. Um, so the UK's culture is quite influenced by its interaction with Europe and the tr traditions of its individual countries, so England, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland and the impact of the British Empire as well. Um, I'm just gonna highlight some iconic symbols of arts and culture in the UK. Um, so the architecture consists of a combination of architectural styles. So I've put in some examples there. I've got the Palace of Westminster in London, which uses the perpendicular Gothic style. Then across the road, <coughs> we've got um, the Tate Modern, which is, um, was formerly a bank, it was formerly a power station, but it's a very different architecture to across the, the river. Um, the UK has got a vibrant tradition of um, theatres and art as well. And um, there's lots of regional theatres in cities and towns, um, fringe theatres, national theatres and the West End as well in London. Um, I've included a few famous pieces of art there as well. So I've got um, L.S. Lowry, um, David Hockney and the Angel of the North, which is a um, modern um, piece of art there as well. Um, we've also got a lot of famous iconic um, arts festivals. So I've included the Edinburgh festivals, which take place in late summer, I've got the Glastonbury Music Festival in Somerset um, and the Notting Hill Carnival, which is an annual Caribbean carnival. Um, football is also a large cultural and um, a large important part of culture. Um, music, it's a major producer and source of music creation. Um, I've included the Beatles, which became highly influential around the world in the 1960s and 70s. Um, David Bowie is an influential musician in the 20th century. And more recently, Amy Winehouse, who was known for her eclectic mix of soul and jazz. Um, food, it's not the best, it doesn't have the best culinary tradition. It's largely absorbed the cultural influences of its post-colonial territories, but I've included um, an English breakfast and fish and chips there. And I'll finish there, so I'm not wasting any more time. Thank you for that, Anna. That was very um, interesting. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think we have we're, we're done with this session now. We've gotten a glimpse into where all our cohorts are coming from and the countries represented. Thank you all so much for sharing about your countries with us. Thank next, you. Next, we have um, Bethel. I'm going to hand over to you to bring on Dr. Manel. Thank you, Oin, and everyone. That was very insightful, and I feel like I, I went straight into each and each country. Uh, next, I'll be giving a brief introduction to Dr. Manal. She's from Egypt, and she's one of our board members. She's a heavyweight, but I'll try to give a very small introduction. So this is Dr. Manal. Dr. Engineer Manal Elwa is a uh, she holds a PhD in healthcare and environmental engineering from Washington University. She graduated in 2011. She also has an MSc in Environmental Sciences and Biotechnology from University of Alexandria a Research Center in 1987 and a BSc in Chemical Engineering from Alexandria University in 1983. 
She's the founder and CEO of art to care programs. It's an art therapy initiative for children with cancer and life-threatening diseases, as well as art to care for human development. In 2020, she was appointed the Egypt representative for the Global Initiative for Childhood Cancer, GICC, launched by the World Health Organization. And Dr. Menal is also passionate about art art, humanity, and helping people in need. She has worked for multinational organizations and service providers delivering engineering consultancies and environmental advices. And she's a multifaceted and highly skilled individual who's driven to consist consistently achieve success as a leader in all of the organizations she has worked with. She's an outstanding art therapist, a teacher, a coach, a mentor, a manager, an advisor, a, besides being an environmental consultant. She's also a board member of some of the most reputable organizations and an active member of several associations. So Dr. Manal, you have the floor and thank you so much. Can you hear Hello, me? Hello everyone. Is Dr. Manal yes. here with us? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, good morning, good evening to uh, all our fellows from everywhere. It's really great day to have you all today with us. And in today's world, and due to globalization, we are facing enormous challenges. Our fellows coming from Uganda, Nigeria, Brazil, Canada, Egypt, uh, South Africa, UK, and many, many other countries with different beliefs and different nations but they are all united under the art umbrella. Art can easily bridge the culture's gaps. Today, gathering for Arts in Medicine 2021 orientation will raise your awareness and cultural competence. We offer you nine ways to bridge the, those culture gaps. Culture around the world, international culture, customs and tradition, values and beliefs, inclusive leadership, diversity, inclusion, team spirit, and compassion. Time has come together, united as one world and good global citizen to show our respect to human and to the world. And as a leader, should be our number one job to help our team members, our team fellows to reach their highest potential. It requires paying attention, but also care and compassion. Leadership is easy if you are truly focused on yourself, but the true fruits of leadership comes from helping team, helping fellows to succeed while inspiring them to achieve their human goals. Welcome all fellows from all over the world. Thank you for being with us in this journey. Yes, I'm done. Thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Mandel. Thank you for that. I'm just going to go straight and play a track that was played, that was um, written and performed by the arts and medicine um, music team. It was a song that was performed by for the um, frontliners during the pandemic. So if you just stay tuned and I'll just share my screen. The song is titled um, you are not alone. Across the globe, more than ever before, our collective humanity has been tested and our hopes tried. We have lost friends and family members to the pandemic. Despite this, our hope is alive. Our resilience is renewed with courage and empathy we will rise we will win this too shall pass no matter how dark the night may 
maybe morning would surely come After the rainfall come would shine again Don't lose hope Hand in hand, yes, we can make the world a better place Help is not so far only, just look within enjoyed that. Can everyone see me and hear me? Yes. Awesome. So I'm yes, going to hand over to you. Rodney. Rodney is going to um, introduce um, our next speaker. Very brief introduction, please. Rodney. All right. Yes, Oin, I'm here. Go yes. Right uh, and uh, thank you for that presentation. At this juncture, I'd like to invite uh, uh, Mr. Kunle Adewale, the founder of uh, Arts in Medicine Fellowship. Uh, Mr. Kunle Adewale is a, an arts in health practitioner and he comes from Nigeria. And he's a graduate of Awolowo University and uh, his specialty is painting and art history. He studied civic leadership at, from Tulane University, arts in health for helping professionals, Charlotte USA, but he's also very well known for uh, being a founder of uh, Tender Arts Nigeria. And like I said, arts in medicine projects and arts in medicine fellowship. And he's the reason as to why we are here. And uh, I would uh, like uh, all of you to put your hands together to welcome um, 
Mr. Kune Adewale. You can, you can shake your hands like this. Hi, everyone. Yeah, you're welcome, Mr. Kune. Hi, hi, everyone. Good afternoon. From wherever you are uh, in any part of the world, good afternoon, good evening, or good morning somewhere else now. Um, yeah, I'm going to just uh, be very quick with my presentation because we've really spent a lot of time today. And I want to apologize uh, for those who were not able to present uh, for their countries. I will make uh, allowance for you probably during next week's session so that you can actually be uh, represented. We are very sorry about that. So I'm going to talk very swiftly about um, the art in medicine program. I'm going to be sharing my slide. Uh, okay, excellent. Okay. Great. So um, our art in health programs, our art medicine fellowship model. And um, so I, I was reflecting on the work that we do through the art in medicine program using creativity and diverse art forms to improve quality of life of people. And so for me, the art brings humanity into the sanctuary of hope, healing, and happiness. Um, how it started, like Dr. Akishete Elias said, um, when we started the Art in Health program at the Sickle Cell Foundation Nigeria way back 2013. So this is a picture of me here with some of the Sickle Cell patients who came to the clinic for sessions. So I go to this space to facilitate art sessions, uh, which include uh, painting sessions. And then between 2013, and on this other side is 2021. So this is the most recent. So we can see the, the eight years gap from what it used to be to what it is now. Also in 2014, I, you know, I started volunteering as an artist to work with children in pediatric oncology at the Lagos University Teaching Hospital. So if you look at the other side, the left side of the, of the, of the screen, you will see me with the kids, uh, see the kind of images they have on the walls, the mirrors, way back in 2014. And you can see my long neck here too. It's been a long journey right uh engaging uh children living with cancer um how they can use art as a form of therapy to you know have joy and happiness and the fast forward to 2019 the five years difference look at the mirrors on the wall look at what it used to be in 2014 look at what it is in 2019 we can see the significant progress that we have made through the Art in Medicine Fellowship Program. Now that we have, those days I used to like go on weekend on Saturdays or sometimes on Sunday after church to work with the children. But now we have, through Art in Medicine Fellowship Program, we now have people who are experts in the field of music, in the field of paintings, in the field of arts, where we now engage with the children, right, in a way that, that brings so much joy to the environment and life to the environment. So in, through the support of the United States mission in Nigeria, the Art Medicine Fellowship was launched in, in the year 2018 with the aim of integrating art into health care. And that's how it was funded through the grant support of the US Department of State. So Art Medicine Fellowship is a nonprofit arm of Tender Art Nigeria. We focus on medical humanities and seek to promote art engagement to alleviate the pains of individuals and improve overall health outcomes of patients, families, and caregivers. So we provide education, awareness, research, and practical interventions through the art and thought leadership. So we engage with those in need of healing, cultivating more functional and supportive environment in non-traditional spaces. So the Art Medicine Fellowship program has you know, this diversity, a multidisciplinary team of artists 
a medical student, doctor, nurses, midwife, psychiatrist, psychotherapist, psychologists, artists, educators, filmmakers, photographer, poet, dancers, musicians, storyteller, dramatists, social workers, pharmacists, dentists, mental health advocates, administrators, and researchers. All of these people are now part of this very big umbrella called the Arctic Medicine Fellowship Program. And interestingly, this is our fifth cohort now that we've not gone global. So far, we have over 500 fellows from 20 countries from around the world. So these are our board members, uh, Jisonke, uh, Stephanie Ray, Dominic Campbell, Achenri Dachaba, Oliver Nwongo, Dr. GK, Professor Chrissy Kuroma, Dr. Kishete, and Dr. Mane Leor from Egypt. Uh, these are the Art and Medicine Fellowship leaders, uh, myself, Oyinda Mola, Oyin Consola, one of the hosts, Dr. Femi Adewoyi, uh, Ms. Adetayo Adedoyin, uh, Kende Adenle, Lassisi Babatunde Gabriel, Dr. Fakile, and Dr. John uh, Adenle. We also have our country liaison directors, uh, like from Namibia, Teresa Lindogo, Dr. Bertel, uh, Midland Art Church, Dr. Christian Anesitos, John Wokosha, uh, Frank Iboma, Tom, Tom from Botswana, um, my brother from Uganda, I'm trying to say uh, Rodney, Emmanuel Okoye, and Ola Inka. So all of these people I've mentioned to us now are leaders in Art and Medicine Fellowship Program. What is interesting about the Art and Medicine Fellowship Program is that every one of us or every one of you have opportunity to become a leader, regardless of where you come from, regardless of what you look like, regardless of what discipline you are involved with, you have that opportunity, you have that privilege of being able to contribute your skill, you have that opportunity of being able to make input into the overall uh, program that we run in the, in the fellowship. Some of the faculty members, some of the people that will be teaching us in our program for this cohort include Jeff Pofo is a lecturer at the Center for Art and Medicine Program, University of Florida, in the United States. Uh, we have Amy Toto, a director of World Place Cincinnati. We have Dominic Campbell, who is a cultural producer, also the co-founder of the Creative Aging International in Ireland, in the UK. We have, to, we have Matt Ga, who is a teaching artist, a researcher, creative aging advocate, also an Atlantic fellow for the Global Brain Health. We have Kachi, founder of Postpartum Support uh, Network Africa. Uh, we have Sarah Hines, uh, who is the artist in residence at the University of Florida Health. So there are a few programs that the way we run our program, the way our program is designed in a way that is based on social capital. So um, value-based relationship with our community members, uh, the NGOs, diplomatic missions, team members of the Art and Medicine Fellowship Program. So this is the echo the ecosystem of the Art and Medicine Fellowship Program, the government agency, the health institution, the patient, the caregiver, the health workers, the family members, the board members, and of, of course, private organizations that want us to actually help them to facilitate um, artistic projects for their CSR, right? So this is like the ecosystem of the Art and Medicine Fellowship Program. And one of the things we look at in Art and Medicine Fellowship Program is social good. So we realize that there are many people who want to use their talent for social good, who want to use their talent to make the world a better place. And then, so we have therapeutic art session, music concert, art and health festival, uh, hospital beautification, mirrors, art exhibitions, art workshops and training, and of course, volunteerism. So many people try to like volunteer their time to be able to, you know, impact knowledge and skill and art. So, uh, bring joy into hospital space, into the community. And of course, if you look at the images on my right hand, you'll see uh, those two people you see up, up there are two fellows uh, who actually facilitated, uh, facilitating the uh, bedside art session for a patient in one of the pediatric uh, wards at the Lagos University Hospital. And below that picture are also uh, doctors now. They are now medical doctors, but while they were in medical school, they actually volunteer their time to go and facilitate a session in a psychiatric hospital in Lagos, Nigeria. So we have the area of our social enterprise uh, where we get a referral for, for, from a partner organization to, you know, to be able to generate funds to run our project. And of course, through the fees that some of, some of you pay, we are able to run the program uh, through art exhibitions, fellowship souvenirs like t shirt and some branded materials. Through this means we are able to raise funds to continue to perform some administrative tasks. 
of course, we love to party. So it's not all, always about work, work, and work. So we love to hang out uh, for our social well being. And also, uh, of course, we, we love to recognize fellows, our partner organizations, and our stakeholders who have contributed to the fellowship. Uh, also, we, we try to um, we host international exchange programs. Uh, so if you look below this picture here of this nature, you see here some of our fellows who participated at the University of Florida summer intensive program. And uh, so every summer, there's an opportunity for you to travel to the US if you want to like, you know, for professional development in a global program. So our fellows have opportunity of being involved in that. Another exchange program include art, art and research program in the UK. Uh, being actually that is being run by the University College London in partnership with the University of Florida Art, Art Medicine Program or Art and Health Program. There are others, there are other international exchange programs like the Atlantic Fellows for Equity in Brain Health, the Global Brain, Brain Health Institute in the UK and also in the US, and several others. So many of us would be introduced to these opportunities uh, very soon. Uh, We'll be sharing with you international exchange program, fully funded program that you can apply for. And then, of course, you can go ahead and uh, we hope that you get shortlisted in such programs. Um, we have special specialized groups, or we'll call them um, community interest groups. Some of our fellows are into like mental health or maternal health. There are some who are very passionate about social justice, activism, or displacement. There are those who are very passionate about disabilities. Others are passionate about child health, uh, pediatric sickle cell and oncology. There are fellows who are actually interested in geriatrics or brain health or dementia related engagement. So you get to see this ecosystem also that, you know, even though we have several fellows in the program, our interest actually varies. So you begin to realize how do you begin to situate and align yourself based on your interest and how do you begin to build relationship? with people who actually, whose interests aligns with yours and how you can gather more knowledge, get more skills and you know, be impacted with the benefit of being in a global fellowship program like this. Um, yes, of course, through the social media, we, we, you know, we talk about the social impact of our programs um, out there. So the big picture for us is the social change. All of the things we've been doing, the big picture is social change, like the frontline, the frontliners uh, musical for COVID nineteen that we just listened to or we just watched. That's just part of the social change where you see doctors, nurses, or clinicians coming together and being able to use their creative skills to inspire hope for humanity. Of course, art for brain health, gift of music at Christmas for for health, the National Art and Health Conference, the Art Medicine Fellowship Program, the clinicians for the art cultural exchanges, art, art and health innovation, of all of these are like small projects that are ongoing in one way or the other, of course, to be able to create the big social change that we are all looking at. So touching lives is a lifetime journey for us, and we are glad to have you all on board. So we're passionate, we're progressive, and we're purpose-driven for Global Goal 3, good health and well-being. So thank you very much. Uh, we are very excited to have all of you in the, the Global Art and Medicine Fellowship Program. I know it's going to be uh, an amazing time for all of us. Uh, does make out your time. This is one of the best opportunities of your life. Get ready to move forward. Thank you very, very much, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Kunle. <laughs> Our in-house doctor, thank you so much for that. <clears throat> for that um insight or more insight into um, arts and medicine, the journey so far. So I'm sure everybody's now really, really gingered as to the way, um, as to the organization that they are joining. Um, so while we're on that note, we're going to have Teresa tell us a bit more about the curriculum and what it is that you will be experiencing during this cohort. Teresa? Hi, thank you so much. Thank you, Kunle for that, Dr. Kunle. <laughs> Bring it home. <laughs> so I'll briefly take um, all of you through the, through the um, curriculum, because we don't have enough time. 
So this curriculum is about nine to 10 weeks and we have the creative practice for the first week. Uh, this is the visual arts, music and dance. Then we have introduction to arts and health for students and professionals. And you will be getting all the dates and more information moving forward. Um, there's also going to be a Q&A for uh, everyone who would like to have questions. Can you please mute yourself as you come in? Please make sure to mute yourself. Thank you. So the next, for the third week, we have leadership in arts and health. It is really, really important that we do touch on leadership because in most cases, you will have to be working independently or with other people. And so we're all leaders here. And at the end um, of the fellowship, you'll also be in groups and working with mentors. And so that is very exciting. Um, well, for me, I was excited and I had a lot of fun. The next we'll have mental health and arts, creative practice, visual arts, movement and poetry. We have design thinking and health innovation. Then we have fellows ideation practice. And this is where you will be put in groups and you have a mentor. You will also have um, an opportunity to be selected as the leader of the group. And so you will have amazing fun working with each other and um, sort of mixing and um, yeah, mixing your delicious talents. Uh, to come up with a project that will eventually go to the internet, the international festival. So that's the fellows uh, ideation practice. Next, we'll have the fellows ideation and pitch day. So this one is very important because you will have the opportunity to pitch your idea to the mentors and to the board mem members and to everyone. Um, so that will also be an amazing opportunity to express everyone's ideas. So next up, you'll have the Arts and Health Festival week. This is gonna be a week full of all of the ideas, all of the uh, projects that you have come up with and to literally implement it. Uh, of course, because of the uh, COVID um, pandemic, we'll be doing it online, but of course it will be just as fun, just as engaging. I think that this uh, pandemic, we have to admit that this pandemic has provided an opportunity for us to go further than expected uh, this year. So next up, we'll have the reviews and the feedbacks and the alumni engagements. And then we'll have the closing ceremony. But you should not be sad after that because you will have opportunities, like Kulne has said, to um, apply for other fellowships and other projects and work with other projects and other people as well. Um, so with the highlights that I have, fellows will be invited or divided into a group of 10 to 12. Uh, the purpose of this is for bonding, team building, peer-to-peer -peer mentoring, cross-cultural relationship building, and ideation for the arts in health festival presentation. Now, the Arts and Medicine Fellowship subgroup will have the, you know, the subgroup leaders. Two fellows will be selected to lead the group of the 10 or 12, like I said earlier on. The Arts in Health Festival, it's a week-long hybrid event, led fellows across communities and continents. I'm really excited about this. I cannot wait to see what you guys come up with because I think that it's gonna be big and so much better. So here are just a few notes. Fellows are expected to attend all sessions. The maximum of 70% attendance is required for certificate. All sessions would be recorded so that those who might not be um, who might not be able to make it can then uh, say so, and then they'll have that um, to their access. Then fellows are expected to fill a survey from the monitoring and evaluation team. This is imperative for our sake and yours, of course, for reflection, but for us to also um, have the opportunity to measure um, the impact of this type of fellowship. We've had so much success so far, and this is quite new. I'm from Namibia, and I mean, there's no arts and medicine 
program at all. So when we go to hospitals, when we go to clinics, we have proof, we have research to show, listen, this works. Listen, a lot of people are interested and we've got something. So fellows are also expected to dress decently during the sessions. Please wear professional, make sure you have a great um, lighting background and always make sure to mute yourself as you come in. And also with the ID as you sign in, please, please, please have your full names as how you registered or applied for the fellowship. And that's about it. So if you have any questions for us, the platform is open. Thank you. Uh, by the way, just raise your hand so that we can select you and we'll be able to unmute you and you can ask your question. Please keep it short so that we don't run out of time. I mean, we are running out of time, but so that we don't waste more time. Thank you so much. Any questions? Raise your hand, please. Well, not literally, but. <laughs> Yes, we have a question in the chat. Um, okay. Said, Will we be able to get a global a schedule beforehand so we can have no clashes with our schedules? Yes, so with the schedule, you will be provided with that, but know that the uh, sessions will be every Sunday from three o'clock to five West African time. That's the designated time for this um, uh, fellowship to make it easier for everyone so that we're not clashing during the week. So yes, you will be getting um, a schedule. <clears throat> You've also answered the second but, question because we had another question that what is the time commitment expected each week? But you have yes. answered that. Two weeks, uh, two hours per week from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. West African time. Correct. Any other questions? Hello, Teresa. Excuse me? Yeah, there's one Ahmed Oluwati Milei that is raising up his hand. Say that again, please. Someone Oluwati. has his hand raised. Hand Ahmed has his hands raised. Okay, noted. We'll get that. Thank you. Olua Timilei. Sorry for butchering your name. Can we get the curriculum? Yes. You'll be able to have access to the curriculum. I guess while we're also um, doing the q and A, I I can also share an, uh, an announcement that we have. Mm -hmm. um, the participation, the payment of the participation fee has been extended um, to the 31st of July, right? It was supposed to end tomorrow, but I think it's been extended now to the 30th. 31st of, sorry? 30th. To the 30th, 30th of sorry. July. To the 30th of July. So that's 3 0. So that's on Friday. And also, please note um, that all temporary WhatsApp groups that um, were on during the um, registration process will be closed on July 31st at 12 a.m. So everybody that has paid and has completed their registration will be migrated into their fellowship groups and the temporary groups will shut down by the 31st of July at 12 a.m. So please note that um, fellowship um, sessions start on the 1st of August. So that's on Sunday, next Sunday at 3 p.m. Hope everybody got that. Any other questions? Okay, so since we don't have any, any other questions, I'm going to introduce uh, Miss or invite Miss Oinda Fake to come in and give us a closing remark.
we've had a very full afternoon and um, Ms. Oinda, she's, uh, she's a big part of arts and medicine. She's our director of special projects. Um, she is also the art director of the Center for Contemporary Arts in, in Lagos. And also, and when you see her, you see how that she loves art because she's always wearing one art or the other. <laughs> so Oinda, are you here? Well, in yes, floor. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> thank you so much for the introduction, Oinka. And thank you to all our amazing presenters. It was such a fascinating insight uh, and taking us around the world. Um, you know, just to echo everybody's sentiments on the team, it's very exciting. We've gone from being a Lagos-based fellowship uh, and we've grown exponentially over the last, is it, is it even two years, Mr. Kunle? Um, from, you know, just Lagos to Abuja to Africa and now the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you guys all three years, okay. Um, so yeah, so we're very happy to have all of you um, on this journey with us. I think what's fantastic is that, you know, a lot of us have worked um, in silos, worked in our communities, but here there's an opportunity to work synergistically and to really um, increase the impact that we have within the arts um, and healthcare spaces. Um, I'm fortunate enough to be on the team um, as the special, the, the director for special projects. So I do look forward to working with you all uh, in different capacities um, as you develop the projects and as we, um, you know, impact the different communities. Uh, I think that, you know, it, there's just so much work to do. And it's such a, it, it's an exciting time, I think, for arts and health. It's exciting because we can see that it's becoming much more professionalized. Um, there's a lot more unity within the space and um, there is growth. And I think that the fact that so many healthcare professionals, artists are here today and have come along on this journey just shows that there is um, a great importance that is being placed on the arts within the healing spaces. And, you know, some of us, I think we knew intuitively that the arts were healing, but, you know, the, the science is backing it up and backing up what we do. Um, I look forward to you. I, I, I just urge you to take down notes, be in attendance, you know, show up, show up for the sessions, but also show up for your teams and your groups as well. I think there is a real big opportunity in the, in the group work that you do together and the impact that you make. Um, there's an arts and medicine festival as well that comes at the end of the fellowship um, where you're able to hone those skills and to really present it to the public and to the different um, sectors that you're operating in. Um, of course, we've been here for what, two hours, but I could say that um, the time has been very well spent. Um, and I look forward to next week session uh, kicking off um, and we always kick off with um, our feet to the ground running. So just know that it's going to be a full on experience. Um, and I just urge you all to enjoy the ride. So I pass it back now on to you, Oyin. Thank you so much, Oyinda. And you, she's so spot on in saying that we're gonna hit the ground running next week. Um, and it's going to be hard work, but loads and loads of fun. So we encourage you to not miss any of the sessions as much as you can. Um, somebody asked the question as to what to do if um, they have pre-scheduled um, sessions that will take them away. Send an email to admin or reach out to your group leader on your groups. Let us know if you're not going to be around so that we can track. We do track um, attendance, so <laughs> note that. And also, um, thank you all very much for joining us today. The session was recorded. We will send out um, the link. And that's yeah. the same thing that will happen with all the sessions. You will get a link after the sessions so that you can go over it again. So any the, last words from my co-host? Sorry, I'm from Yeah. Sorry. So um, very quickly, please, a very quick one. Um, Oinda, thanks for that. Um, very powerful closing remark. Um, just a few things. I see that few people ask some questions regarding if this is going to be virtual program or true. 
we encourage you based on your countries to meet. Um, I, I see, I know that the groups in Egypt have been meeting fantastic groups, fantastic groups. So this is not a fellowship where you just meet and they, or you're just there by yourself. So you are, from, you are from Uganda, you can meet with other fellows from Uganda. You can have your personal WhatsApp group and have conversation as a country. So have that country WhatsApp group where you guys have conversation and then maybe you can think of projects you can do together. The idea is to revive the art and health practices across countries. And I know now that we have more fellows coming to the program across the country. So by staying together, by building relationships together, there's so much more you, that you can do together. Uh, those who are in Nigeria, you can, if you, are in, if you are based in Lagos, I'm based in Lagos, and several of us are based in Lagos, we can meet up somewhere, right? And then we can just hang out somewhere with COVID protocols in place, and then we can just hang out and they just enjoy ourselves. I know, I know through the Art and Health Festival, the Art and Health Festival is a bit hybrid, so it's not just purely virtual. So there's that tendency of you being able to come together, if depending on how the program is designed for you to probably visit the hospital to carry out a project, depending on what is in place in terms of um, the health protocols that it actually put in place. So just, just get ready for a lifetime opportunity and a major uh, progress in your trajectory as a professional or as a student. Do we, do we understand? Yes, sir. Okay, yeah, yeah. So if, if you have any question more, forward it to the admin. Admin will actually forward it to the leadership and then your question will be answered. I think that's, that will help us greatly. If you have more questions, just forward your questions to, to the admin, please. And then that will be attended to. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you, Dr. Kule. Thank you. Um, a, a shout out as well to our special guest, um, Dr. Akinshete, who gave us the welcome remark, and Dr. Manel, who also gave us a, a goodwill remark, and, um, and all our fellows who performed for us one way or the other and contributed to how um, the fellowship is going to flow. A special shout out to um, the groups that, the teams that work behind the scenes. We have um, a huge team working behind the, um, the scenes who you know, have been worked um, sleeplessly to bring this together. So we say thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone. Any last remarks, Teresa? I just wanted to say that when you are developing programs and projects, especially um, new uh, concepts like arts in health, arts in medicine, arts in community health, it is imperative to group yourselves with people, pair yourself with people. So you can create, like Mr. Kune said, groups, casual groups on your own, um, because after the fellowship, when you want to um, create a project, you will have those resources. They're resources. It's gold. People are gold. Partnership is gold. So it's really important to remember that I am excited. And yeah, I can't wait to take on this journey again. And kudos. <laughs> um, one last thing. The evaluation team has just dropped um, a link in the in the chat we invite everybody to please fill out the link um it's something that will happen after every session and it will serve as your attendance for the week session so and then you filling out the form also helps us to improve on how um the fellowship flows so it's very valuable to us so please fill the um the form link is in the chat so that brings us to the end of today. Thank you all so very, very much. From Lagos, my name is Oyi Talabi again. And from Lagos, we will say Odabo, which is bye-bye. The music for us. Bye. Have a fabulous week. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh, Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye
Grazie a tutti. Bye. 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 Bye.